question. Through the course of the presentation, please type in your questions in the chat box. We'll respond to them at the end of the session, and some of them will type responses as the program progresses. So please feel free to interact with us so that we'll be able to have an interactive session of this third virtual field day conducted in Doma, Mashonaland West Province. On that note, I would like to invite the farmer to give us his opening remarks as well as give us a highlight of the varieties that he established, particularly looking at maize. So the farmer is going to speak firstly about SC727, a late maturity maize hybrid that they established at the farm. So let's hear from the farmer, Mr. Mparaganda. We are here today in a field of uh, 25 hectares of uh, 727 variety of seed corn. So now here farmers, I will take you from the day one up until today uh, when I've started doing this uh, uh, variety 727. Firstly, we did our land preparation in mid-August, uh, September. Then uh, we, we start to plant after first rains, which is mid of uh, December. Our plant population uh, on this variety, we use uh, 75, 22 centimeters. We wanted to achieve uh, 60,000 plants per hectare. Our, 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 our plant population, um, as I said, uh, we, it was 60,000 per hectare. Then the land preparation, uh, we use a chisel plow on this field. The reason why we are keep on using ch chisel plow, uh, in our area here, I've seen that a lot of our lands or our fields, there's a lot of combustion. Combustion, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge to us farmers. Most of us, I understand, we are using rom discs. Rom discs, keep on using the rom discs, it creates combustion. Combustion, it, it reduces the yields. Because the roots, there will be no way to go downwards. So with this uh, chisel plow, it breaks the combustion. That's why we are seeing our crop here. It looks very good in standability. So it comes to basal dressing, we use about uh, 300 kgs, 300 kgs per hectare. Then uh, on, uh, on top dressing, we use about 280 kgs per hectare. This was urea. That's why I see we have reduced our... our, 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 our 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 top dressing comes on uh, here besides we applied the um, uh, first um, roundup and uh, meter on the first application of uh, chemicals then on the second application we use nicosephron to kill the the chamber grass here we do have a lot of chamber grass here in this dome as well. so here that is what we have done on this field of 727 I think you can see this cob. Here yeah, it's a 727 cob. We count it around the, the rows of this cob. It's about 16 lines. Then you count the nails coming here. It's around the 48 to 50. And they're still growing. Uh, up to, some goes up to, to 60 kennels. So for myself, I think this is my fifth year doing this 727. My first year, 2016. 17 when i started to venturing into farming business i started with this 727719 on 727 i'll come back to 2016 17 year old i attained 11.5 tons per hectare under dry land as you can see this uh, this field is an under dry land so with the 727 farmers after you have done all the good agronomic practice you can attain 12 plus tons per hectare. So I'm sure you've seen uh, all what we are seeing here on this crop under 727. I thank you farmers. So we've just heard there from the farmer, Mr. Mofat Sefu Mparaganda, explaining to us how he established his SC 727 crop. He went on to give us a brief history about his relationship with Sitco varieties he highlighted that his relationship is long-standing, having established these varieties over five years and having attained yields of 11.5 tons per hectare in previous seasons. And this season is anticipating to get higher yields from what we were seeing. The farmer went on to unpack genetic good agronomic practices 
that unlock the genetic value from the crops. When he spoke about good land preparation, he mentioned issues to do with the use of a chisel plow, where in their area, because of compaction, he found it to be a good thing to do in the field before coming in with the crop to break the compaction zone and allow for good penetration of the roots as well as water infiltration. The farmer also explained about herbicide choice, where for their area, shamba grass is problematic. So they chose to use herbicides that are aligned to the control of shamba grass. So now we're going to be hearing the farmer speaking about the new flagship SC659, the new variety in the media maturity varieties established at his farm. This variety 659 has red havoc across the farming community with many farmers turning their heads and liking the performance of this variety across the commercial and the communal sector. So it's a variety to keep an eye out for and look out for. So let's hear from Misty Paraganda what his establishment as well as his experience with SC659 is. We are standing in a field of 225 SC659. It's a new variety which I've started uh, planting in uh, 2020-2021 season. After I've been instructed by my fellow agronom, Mr. Matombo from Sidco. Farmers, um, here in Marsh West, um, Cherengi Farm, as you can see, um, I've, uh, I've done um, my land prep in uh, August, September during uh, uh, summer, uh, sorry, during uh, autumn, in preparation for the coming rains in November. Here we start to receive our first rains in November. So here our planting dates was on the first week, around 7, 7th of December 2020. That's when we've done our, done our planting here in this field. Uh, our land preparation we've done, uh, we've used the chisel plow. That's the most tool that we are using here. We use the chisel plow. Then in the planting, we use a monosem planter. It an uh, out row of 75 centimeters and in row 22 centimeters. We wanted to achieve around 60,000 plants per hectare. The reason why we want to achieve 60,000 plants in terms of population, the yield. So this 659 is my first time doing this variety. Compared with my last varieties I've, I've been planting here, it's similar to 719 according to its height and its sustainability. So I will see how it goes in terms of feed, but as I'm seeing it, it shows I'm going to get a plus or minus 10 tons per, plus or minus 10 tons per hectare. That's include my pop, my plant population. Comes to my uh, chemical application, I did uh, my post and I did my, my, my pre as well. And as you can see, my field is clean. And uh, comes to fertilizer application on basal, I use 300 kgs per hectare. Top, I use 300 urea. I use urea 300 kgs per hectare, but we did once application at just after new level. This is the, the time when we did our fertilizer application. Farmers, um, I want to urge you to take farming seriously. If you take farming as a business, truly speaking, you, you achieve your goal. Unlike those who are taking it like you, they are joking. I myself, as you can see, I'm a young farmer here. I've just, it's my, it's, I'm almost four and a half years into farming. After I've done some other business in Arari, I just come to venture into farming. But through farming, for me, I've achieved, achieved a lot in terms of machinery, uh, which I'm using here uh, in Micherengi. Then also, from the process that I'm getting from farm, some I've diversified into my trucking industry. I bought some trucks using the processes from my farm. Also, my my keto. I bought some ketos. I do have a keto, which I bought from this farm. So, farmers, we are here in, in war around here, Doma. I encourage you to take farming seriously. And the one thing that I've learned myself, uh, I take time during the planting season. I come here in early November up to 31 of December. Then when I retire to go back to my uh, normal work, then I leave the, my other guys here to do the, the other job. So uh, one thing that I've noticed is some of us farmers, we are, we are doing ourselves on farming. So farming skills us a lot. 
So I encourage you here to do it practically yourself. Because when you are on, when you are doing it on your own, the results you can see it for yourself. Thank you. There you have it, farmers. We have just heard from Mr. Mbaraganda explaining to us the establishment of this new flagship SC659. He did explain that he is looking forward to getting bumper harvest of well above 10 tons per hectare. Suffice to say, this variety can reach up to 40 tons per hectare under optimum management based on its yield potential. So it's up to the farmer to unlock the genetic value of the seed cogenetics that they will have established by employing good agronomic practices. On 659, Mr. Paraganda spoke about the plant population, an issue that he also alluded to when he was speaking about SC727, where he explained the importance of optimum plant populations. And at CITCO, the optimum plant population ranges between 50,000 to 60,000 plants per hectare. The farmer also went on to mention issues to do with fertilizer management, where he gave us the basal and top dressing fertilizer. Suffice to say, we need to move away from the custom of general fertilizer recommendations or using fertilizers that were used by another farmer without inquiring to get custom made fertilizer recommendations which can only come from soil analysis. So it's important for you to consider doing soil analysis for you to get custom-made fertilizer recommendations and to use fertilizers optimally at the correct time, the correct rate, and in the correct way, particularly looking at the season that we had, applying split applications of fertilizers. When looking at AN, it's recommended to avoid incidences of leaching. And the farmer here explained that they use urea a fertilizer that is highly volatile. So you need to understand its use and application mechanisms so that it works to the best of its ability. The farmer also went on a topic that is um, top of the mind nowadays is farming as a business. So farming is no longer an extracurricular activity or something that we do as a hobby or to pass time. Farming is a formidable business. As explained here by Mr. Mporaganda, Young as he is, he is taking farming as a serious business, taking time to be at the farm, taking a hands-on approach using his words, and he even encouraged other farmers to desist from the uh, practice of doing cell phone farming only. So he encouraged farmers to take on the hands-on approach and consider farming as a serious business. He explained the number of things that he managed to purchase from his farming enterprises. So it's important to consider farming as a formidable business. On that note, we are moving on to hear from the farmer about the establishment of a soya bean crop in the 2020-21 farming season, where the farmer is going to tell us the variety that the, they established, as well as the head trade, and their learning points in the establishment of the soya bean variety that they got from Sitco. My name is Mofad Sefu. Uh, we are here in Mucherengi. No, my area, Marsh West, Ward 2. Uh, here I've got my wife beside me. We are standing here in a field of soya bean where we did a uh, spike variety. So far, farmers, I will start telling you the way how I've done it for me to have this type of a crop at the moment. Firstly, this field I did uh, land prep in August, September. That's when we did the land preparation on this field. On land preparation, we've used our tractors and the machine that we've used, we've used a chisel plow, a five ton. That is the machine that we've used here. Then come on planting, we did our planting on the first week of December. That's when we did our planting, this soya. Uh, we use a monosome planter. We do not have a seed, we do not have a seed here. We use a monosome planter. Um, on the spacing, as you can see, our lines we spaced on 75 centimeters apart. Then in row, we use three centimeters apart. The reason we wanted to achieve plus or minus 450,000 plants per hectare. On um, on yeah, besides, after planting, we use the roundup and the matter. Then our plants. Then after germination, maybe three weeks. Uh, that is when we we apply the post-germination. On fertilizers, 
we've put 250 kgs per hectare on this plant. Uh, it was a cereal blend, 623-23, the type of fertilizer we used here. Then it comes to pest and the rust control. We use Chevit and the Cabra, both with some insects. But after we have applied that, we've seen our crop it comes to this uh, good quality, as you can see. Then, um, as you can see, this crop, it's our first season to plant this variety. Previously, we used to do Serenade and the Safari. But after we have introduced this crop by our uh, seed go guys, it shows it has performed very well compared to the previous variety we used to grow here. Then you can see even the height, I'm standing here, it's almost 1.2 to 1.5 up from the ground. So I encourage you farmers, where you are coming from, to try this variety of uh, spike. So on the harvest, we're, harvest, we're expecting to have it maybe mid-April. Then we'll see from the combine how much we'll get into the hectare. This is the variety we've done here in Mcherenki. Thank you. So we've just heard there from the farmer the establishment of a soybean variety, SC spike, in the 2020-21 farming season. So we, oh, we are now just want to give you a brief overview of the Sitco soybean varieties and the product basket that we have at Sitco. So you find that in the soybean product basket, they have a wide range of soybean varieties that farmers can choose from. We have a determinate variety, SC status. We have, an, we have which can mature in a reduced number of days. It's a short stature variety that then gives you the ability to punch in high plant populations without the risk of lodging. Then in the indeterminate product basket of soybean, that's where we find the varieties such as SC Serenade, SC Safari, and this flagship that we were hearing from Mr. Paraganda, SC Spike. And Mr. Paraganda, using his words, is quite happy given the height of the crop, which is at around 1.2 to 1.5 meters. Suffice to say in soybean production, plant height, gives more room for there to be a higher number of pod per plant, which also feeds into the number of uh, grain per pod. And this will also ultimately give us high yields. The farmer, having mentioned the height, he also mentioned that this variety is a good tolerance to lodging because given its height, it's still standing firm in the fields with no signs of lodging. And also considering that the farmer established at a population of 450,000 plants per hectare, Optimum plant population keeps coming back because it speaks to issues to do with the yield determinants, which are yield per plant and yield per unit area. So you need to optimize on the plant population of any given crop for you to get the maximum yield that you expect from that crop that you will have established. From Mr. Paraganda's speech, we heard about issues to do with insect pest control, where he mentioned that they came in with insect pest control based on the insects that they found in their fields. This speaks to, speaks to issues to do with regular scouting. With regular scouting and being a foot soldier and walking inside the field in a systematic way, you are able to ascertain when there is a need for you to come in with control measures before economic threshold levels are reached. Because nowadays, there is talk about sustainable farming practices where you don't need to just come in with chemical control before economic threshold levels have been reached because we also want to be uh, conscious of the environment and do farming in a sustainable way. So this is what we have heard from Misty Paraganda. So having heard from the farmer, let's now move on to hear what the CIDCO commercial agronomist, Mr. Philip Matombo, has to say about the varieties that were established. So from Misty Matombo, we are going to hear firstly about SC727, then we'll hear about 659 before he gives us an overview of the soybean as he was seeing it during the day of the virtual field day. And just to highlight that at the virtual field day, also present were some farmers from the neighboring community, up to 50 farmers managed to attend this virtual field day so that they could see for themselves what you are seeing virtually today. So let's hear from Mr. Philip Macho. My name is Philip Matombo, commercial agronomist for Sidco. 
if we can start with the slogan. Ndika ati sitiko, modi dokutimbeo. Kuti sitiko, dokutimbeo. Kutimbeo, dokutisitiko. Kuti sitiko. Kutimbeo. Kuti sitiko. Kutimbeo. The other one. Ndika ati kuti sitiko. Ndika ati sitiko, modi murika zose. Murika zose, sitiko. Sitiko. Murika zose. Sitiko. Today I am very happy to be with the Doma farmers. I am proud of you because you know varieties to select. Mr. Paraganda, here you have got 50 hectares of SCC 727. All in all, you have got 300 hectares under mix and 60 under soil. So I am just going to explain varietal traits of 727. First one is yield. For region 1, 2, and some parts of region 3, this is the first best choice for you farmers in Zimbabwe. Why? Because of its yield. Where is the yield of 727 come from? Firstly, I think you can see the cob length. With such cob, you can attain 250, even to 300 grams at the profit and half moisture content. Secondly, if you break the 727, 727 have got very high shelling percentage meaning that you have got a small core meaning that when you 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 break this these kennels uh, kiss each other a kiss of you <laughs> that's the secret of 727 it have got a very small core but a very big kennel Another advantage of 727 is that 727 have got a very high bulk density. I think many of you farmers, one who was testifying that when you send it to GMP, you might think it's five tons, but it will be 5.5, maybe six tons per hectare. Uh, six tons, uh, I mean, meaning that it is the bulk density. It, it is very heavy on scale. Another advantage of 727 is the very strong stocks. That is to say, very strong in terms of standing ability. It does not fall in terms of any way. Another advantage of 727 is of clean uh, leaves. You see that at vegetative stage through to physiological maturity, 727 is resistant to many leaf diseases be it grey leaf spot, be it may strip virus, it's resistant, it's inborn, it's inherently resistant. So, what am I saying to you farmers? I am saying you, both irrigated and dryland farmers in region 1 and in region 2, don't hesitate to select this variety as your first best choice. And any other varieties may follow. Okay. So, uh, come to agronomic practices. For, for 727, we advise farmers not to exceed 55,000 plants per hectare. For dryland farmers, I also, I also advise you to reduce even to 48 to 50,000 plants per hectare to reduce competition for moisture under dryland farming let's reduce our plant population. But where there is luxurious moisture under irrigation, we can plant at 55,000 plants per hectare, targeting 53 to 54 standing in the field. Also, like I said in soya beans, let's first test our soils to check the pH level. The pH level best for maize is between 5.5 to 6.5 according to calcium chloride scale. 
If we are not testing ourselves, we are wasting our expensive fertilizers. They will be logged in the soil. Henceforth, we will not attain the said yield. 727 under dry land, you can easily hit your 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, even 11 tons per hectare. Even under irrigation. So, farmers, the other um, good agronomic practice is time of planting. We encourage farmers to timelessly plant from, from end of October through to mid to end of December. But for 727, the best will be mid December for you to attain the said yield. Fertilizer management. We encourage farmers, as I said, test ourselves and be guided accordingly. But a blanket application rate is between 350 to 450 kgs of compound D per hectare. And reduce a bit if it is cereal blend, 623.23. At week three or week four, let's ask them to come in with our first top dressing application. Some come in with the half, that will be 200 kgs per hectare. With that, after two weeks, you come in again with your remaining 200 kgs per hectare. If we delay applying AN, you'll see that uh, you drastically reduce your yield. So farmers, without explaining much, I would say, it starts with the right seed. Seed go the home of Bama harvest. Let's move together seed go and farmers. As agronomists, we are there to advise you accordingly so that you attain the maximum possible yield. So that you attain the maximum return per dollar you would have invested. So that as a country at large, we will we, we, we reach full self -sustainable. Wow, what a powerful presentation we've just heard from the commercial agronomist. Passionate presentation about the performance of SC727. Take home messages from the agronomist where to do with the yield attributes of SC727, where our agronomist highlighted the cob size, the long attractiveness of the cob. He also went on to break the cob in half to show the shelling out percentage where in any cropping venture, you need to know where the economic yield is coming from. So for maize, the economic yield is in the grain. So the grain area should be more than the area covered by the top, which we refer to as the shelling out percentage. So if this is quite high for seed core varieties, and particularly for this 727 variety that we were seeing, um, as explained by the agronomist. The agronomist also went on to give us issues to do with the tolerance of the variety to problematic diseases which is a bonus in the sense that there is no need for you to incur additional costs to buy remedial measures or products to come in and control problematic diseases in maize production, because this will have been curbed in the breeding efforts. He also went on to explain issues to do with the importance of working hand in glove with the agronomist at every stage, where you will then be able to get timeless advice for you to unlock value out of the crops and make sure that you are maximizing on the return per dollar invested, which also speaks to high productivity and profitability at a household level and national level. And we are then able to sell surplus to get the much needed foreign currency for other ventures. So it's important for you to take farming as a formidable business, work hand in glove with the agronomist. But on that note, let's just hear what the agronomist had to say about the new media maturity variety, SC659. Hello, farmers. My name is Philip Matombo, commercial agronomist for Sitco. Today I am in Doma with Doma farmers in Marshall and West Province. Uh, I'm very happy. They say knowledge is power. So as Sitco, we are doing virtual field days. Last week, 
we were in Mashingo, where they grow 727 in SEC 657. By the way, in Sitko, our breeders are having sleepless nights. So that they are breeding rightful varieties to counter this climate change thing, mid drought season seasons. So we have SEC brand new varieties. SEC 659 being this crop. SEC 657. SEC 661. It's up to you farmers. Which one are you going to select? Let me ask them to explain the varietal characteristics of SEC 659. In Shona, they say, Samson, Nyamainuna Kenuta Orayega. Look at the crop. By virtue of its genetics, it's a tall variety. One. Two, it has got a very good tip cover. SEC 659. Henceforth, uh, you will not have the problems of, uh, of uh, pests uh, consuming our, our, our kennel. The other trait is standing ability. As you can see, 659 is tall, but it seldom falls down in, ca in, in, in case of any heavy way. Clear bands for us, farmers. Having seen this, this time around is a shopping window for farmers. When you see SEC 659 in any shop, please quickly take it regardless of the price. Those will be buying these genetics. The yield of SEC 659 ranges from four. In the, in the event of that we have failed, up to 14 tons per hectare. It's a medium maturing hybrid. Shumba. Gorino Zowa. So, we are saying this because next year I age you farmers. You, when I travel across the country, I've seen many superb, many good crops of this variety. So I am having great faith of this variety. It has also got get, uh, a very good shelling percentage uh, in as much as it's, it's, it's still building up because the, the, it's still at, 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 at the milk door stage. But uh, it has got also very good shelling percentage, also a very good variety for for um, green millies. So farmers, uh, I urge you to, as, 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 as you grow in farming, let's take farming seriously. Let's take farming as a business. We should select rightful varieties, not cheap varieties. It will cost you hardly. The other trait of this variety is that it's drought tolerant. In case of two weeks, Three weeks, I, I think there are some, uh, maybe a week or two without the rains, but you see it's still lush green, of course, um, adding, not forgetting the good agronomic practices, but the variety is, general, is generally drought tolerant. So I urge you farmers to, 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 to select this variety. Thank you very much farmers, thank you very much farmers. It starts with the right seed, seed go, the home of Bamba harvest. If I can conclude with a slogan, Nikati Kuti Sitiko, Dokuti Mbeu. Kuti Mbeu, Dokuti Sitiko. Nikati Kuti Kuti Sitiko, Dokuti Sitiko. Nikati Sitiko, Moti Murika Zose. Murika Zose, Sitiko. Sitiko! We have just heard there. It really does start with the right seed. And Sitiko truly is the home of Bamba Harvest. Having pan-African varieties that are suited for different agroecological regions. So now we're going to hear from the agronomist giving us a few points to add on on the variety selection for soya bean production. Mm. 
name is Philip Matombo, Commercial Agronomist for Sidco. It's my pleasure today to be in Doma area at Ms. Paraganda's farm. They've grown 60 hectares of SEC spike. First of all, I want to tell you about the variety SEC spike, its trace, then agronomic trace. Uh, SEC spike is our new kid in the block. Uh, it's a very good variety, as you can see. Its height is over a meter. Save for other varieties like Serenade and, 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 and Safari. Its, it's uh, yield potential is up to five tons per hectare. Clap hands for us farmers. It has got a, a, a longer, a longer uh, pot clearing. That is the distance from the ground to the first pole, which means there will be less combine losses. It's plus or, it will be plus or minus 20 centimeters. Secondly, the benefits of this variety, it has got a longer shattering period, meaning that when the variety reaches physiological maturity, it takes 27 to 30 days before the pod shatters to the ground. Henceforth, you have got time to, to look for a combine or even any other thing. When we have heavy winds, it will not, it doesn't normally fall unless at a very high plant population of over 450,000 plants per hectare. So, to other farmers in Zimbabwe, I'm encouraging you to select this variety as spike next season. Then uh, agronomic practices. The farmer has elaborated what he has done to, to, so that he attain such a superb crop. One is plant population. We encourage farmers to plant 400,000 plants per hectare so that you will be in a range of standing plants in the field of 350 to 400,000 plants per hectare. Secondly, uh, we have to, to, to do our land preparation very, very well to attain a fine tilt. Soybean is a small seeded crop. Henceforth, we, we, our land preparation must be very well. Thirdly, we should take our soil samples in, in winter so that we know our soil pH. The favorable soil pH for soybeans in general is between 5.5 to 6.5 according to calcium chloride scale. Which means if, if we are not in that range, if we are at, the, at say 4% 4, 4 in terms of calcium chloride scale, we will not attain such a good crop. The nutrients will be locked in Shona, it's not nutrients and the crop cannot can, can, cannot withdraw even the fertilizer, the expensive fertilizer to the pot. Then uh, on that plant population, I have said normally we encourage farmers to plant from line to line 45 centimeters instead of 90 centimeters, that of maize. Why? Because uh, for soybeans, it quickly covers the ground, yeah, henceforth smoothering uh, with henceforth even nutrient retention capacity of the entire field will be very high. So we encourage farmers to, 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 to space 45 centimeters, then we play around our indoor spacing depending on our target plant population. Then from there, at the planting, we encourage farmers to, to seed dress or inoculate with rhizobia. There is no reason for any farmer not to inoculate his, so his soybean crop or seed. Why? Because that 100 gram sachet just costs six or five dollars, which covers one hectare. Instead of buying three by 50 kgs or four by 50 kgs, so, so that you apply uh, a, a fertilizer, you just buy that sachet. And the rhizobium uh, bacteria will, will formulate your, your nitrogen for you for free. 
So I would not re-emphasize on that. That generally, according to inoculation, it's 100 grams per 100 kgs of seed. Then add 50 grams of, of, of sugar as a sticking agent. Then from there, add one liter of water. Then sprinkle all the kernels must be sprinkled so that you add the, 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 the rhizobium. Uh, You've just heard there from the agronomist where he gave us the yield attributes of seed box variety, the variety that was established by the farmer SC5. The agronomist went on to uproot one plant where he was showing us the pod clearance, where you can even check out and see that it was well above 15, 16, which means that during combining, there are no challenges of some of the pods being left in the field, thereby the farmer incurring costs through cleaning. So it's important to have good pod clearance and feed soya bean varieties have that. And we also found that on the, in terms of the development of the pods on that plant, there were pods right through to the top of the plant in the indeterminate variety SC spike that we were seeing. And on some pods, if you look closely, you could see that there were three seeds in a single pod. So these are attributes that are going to give us high yield. We also found defensive agronomic traits on the, seed, on the soya bean variety spike, where we could see that there was no lodging in the field and the population that the farmer established the crop at. We also could see that there was disease tolerance, where the incidence of disease was quite low, considering that we had a, a, a season that had persistent rains. It could have been higher than that, but we could see that the variety withstood high incidence of disease pressure. We could also see that the farmer managed to establish the crop well on time, such that at this time it's already at pod filling. Looking at ag agronomic practices, the agronomist emphasized the importance of soil analysis, where he said farmers need to get custom made fertilizer recommendations and understand the acidity of the soil because this has a bearing on fertilizer use efficiency. The agronomist also explained issues to do with the use of rhizobium bacteria where he gave us the correct rates that are supposed to be used when you are applying your soya bean in your soya bean crop. So the important message is that farming is a business and you need to make sure that whatever you are doing at any stage feeds into the productivity of your cropping venture as well as profitability because farming is a business, the return per dollar invested is important. Having heard from the agronomists, at this point, as we move towards winding up this webinar, we are going to hear from the agritech officer for the province for, for Doma, Mucherengi Wadju. We're going to hear from him. He's just going to give us a few pointers and a few tips being the patrons of the farmers in the provinces under the wing of the Ag Ministry of Agriculture. Let's hear what they have to say. Now, what I'm trying, going to try and add on to what he has said is about the window period. The window period here is the time from maturity to the time when it's ready for harvesting or when it starts shattering. This is where we are, most of our farmers are, get, are getting it wrong. Because you start preparing for the labor and all the necessary items which are needed for harvesting when, the, when you are already in the window period. A few days will be left before it starts shattering. With swear beans, once you go wrong there, all the yield is gone. What we need is the yield and in turn get the profits out of the crop or the, the labor you have, uh, I mean, the amount you, you have incurred. Now, what we are supposed to do is knowing the dates when the, 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 the plant is going to mature, the maturity days of each plant. Here we are talking of spike. We have different varieties. We've got spike, safari, we've got serenade and all those. So we, we, whichever uh, variety you are going to plant, you've got to know its maturity days so that you start preparing before it starts shattering. I've always visited some farmers during harvesting. You find where they are going, all the seeds will be on the ground and that yield loss, money loss. So also pro pro profit reduction. So with farmers, <coughs> I mean, all of you farmers, I think, it's best to know your window period 
the time when the crop gets mature and by the time when it starts shattering. So I would urge you all, again, I emphasize, to know your maturity days. In this case, with Spike, he said it's 27 to 30 days. Organize your combine. In, in this case, Mr. Safe has got a very big acreage here. You, he needs to, op to organize his combine, his labor, well in time, so that he doesn't incur those less, lo losses. I think Mr. Matombo has said everything. Uh, it will be a, a matter of spoiling what he has said, but I just wanted to emphasize on the window period because we are getting a lot of losses here before we start harvesting. So to save on time, I think this is what exactly what I wanted to say. Thank you. It's good when you find two agronomists agree. An agronomist of the Ministry of Agriculture and six agronomists. So it's, it shows that we might have a blog and we are there to provide technical information that's relevant for the farmer to unlock value out of their different farming centers. So now we're going to move on to hear from the neighbor. Um, the neighbor is going to speak about uh, the crop that we are seeing, as well as to give a few words of encouragement to other farmers out there. Uh, Mrs. Miribidi, a farmer here in Mcherengi, Doma, Marsh West. I want to thank the Lord for the good rains this year. We want to thank uh, Sidco Company, which is assisting us with good uh, seeds that we are using here in Mcherengi. They are doing well for us. I also want to thank the Paraganda family. They've made us proud and they put us on the map. Because of them, we are here today. They are doing well. We have copied a lot from them. And we are also, we've also copied a lot from, we've been taking notes from what we've been taught here. The Sidco, the Agritechs, they are all supporting us and they are teaching us every day. Today, we've also learned a lot of uh, things here. So we are going to put it into practice and we hope to get better yields in future. Thank you for the good varieties. So as a close note, it could not have been put any better. The farmer just highlighted that we are quite grateful for the rains that we got this season. And she also went on to thank the Paraganda family for having established such exceptional genetics that to an extent that as Sitco, we saw it fit for us to conduct a better of today to showcase the varieties that they established. She went on to thank Sitco for establishing exceptional climate smart genetics across the wide product basket that are aligned to the different agroecological region, regions, in particular their region in, uh, in Doma, Mashonal in West, where she was saying that the varieties are performing well. So on that note, this is the end of the formal session of the virtual field day. Now we invite more questions to come through the chat box and we'll be responding to them live as we aim towards concluding this uh, virtual field day. So for the, from the questions that we have received so far, I'll start answering from the questions that we have received. We have a question here from Elizabeth Dungeni. What is the best yield I can expect from SC Spike? So from SC Spike, from the attributes that we have had from the agronomists, it's an indeterminate soybean variety with the high yield potential. The agronomists put the yield potential at five tons per hectare, but suffice to say, it can reach well above 4.5 tons per hectare under good management. With casing points being of farmers who managed to establish it last season under irrigation and hitting the 5.3 mark at farms such as Pelia Investments Farm along Bindura Road. And some farmers as well in Mashona Land and uh, Mashona Land West and Manika Land. Then you also find that it performed well even in the Midlands province. So the yield potential is well above 4.5 tons per hectare it can go above five tons under optimum management. We also have here uh, a question from Botswana. Thank you for joining us from Botswana. The question is from Kearwetswe in Botswana. And he asks, what the, he wants to know more about the variety SC506. And just to explain and to read the other comment that we got from, um, from Kiawetswe as well. 
Uh, thank you for the presentation. I'm really following and enjoying here in Botswana. It was my first time to plant soya bean SC spike. So far, I'm satisfied with, uh, what, with the performance. And I have learned that soil testing is very important for better application of fertilizers, hence better yield. This is very good feedback. And it will also help another farmer who had missed the point that soil analysis is important. Moving on to your question on SC506. So SC506 is an early maturity yellow maize hybrid, which can be established and matures in about 136 days, plus or minus. You should also note that the uh, uh, yield for days to maturity depends on the altitude, where areas that are lower will result in um, altitudes that are going to allow for the variety to mature much earlier as opposed to areas that are higher. So you find that this maturity is not, is not going to be constant across the globe. But SC506 is indeed a yellow maize, uh, maize hybrid that is established in Botswana. We also have here a question from Trevor Zinu. What is the effect of planting maize now? I am in Mashingo in the low veld area. Thank you very much, Mr. Trevor Zinu, for your question. So the establishment of maize is uh, hinged on uh, different parameters, and one of which is the issues to do with the length of the season, if it's going to be 100% rain-fed crop, as well as the incidence of frost. So looking at the length of the season, given that you are in Mashingo, you find that in Mashingo, during the time where we are now here in Zimbabwe, the season is tailing off in terms of the, the, the rainfall season. So if you're going to be having irrigation for an area like Mashingo, supplementary irrigation might come in handy if you're going to establish crops that are aligned towards green millies, where you find that even the medium and the early maturing varieties are recommended, particularly for your area, because frost uh, tends to come in much later than it does in other areas. So you can establish provided you have irrigation to come in and supplement when the season tails off, tails off in Mashingo, where it usually tends to tell off much earlier than other areas. So you also find that in, um, in the low veld area, as we move further, further down, as we move towards Chirezi, it's areas that are less prone to frost. These are frost-free areas, meaning to say they experience higher heat units even during periods when we are in winter. So for these areas, they can even afford to establish maize during the winter season because these areas are not prone to frost and it will be under irrigation. So thank you very much for that question. We have a question here coming from Edson Makumbi. I enjoyed myself. Edson has joined us from the UK. Thank you so much for joining our presentation and we are quite humbled that you managed to find it enticing and you enjoyed the presentation. We have a question. Uh, let's just ch check in the question uh, chat box as well for more questions. And we are inviting in the next 10 minutes for you to send through your questions so that we can interact with you and give you responses that will help you make informed decisions in your next crop presenter. We have a question here from Nathaniel Chautuka. I'm here in South Africa. How is uh, 506 is good to plant now in areas like Urumbe and um, in areas like Urumbe? So for areas like Urumbe, you find that uh, this uh, variety SC506, particularly here in Zimbabwe, we have one yellow maize hybrid that has performed above all the yellow varieties that we have, SC608. So it's the one that we highly recommend for establishment. And if it's for green millies, given that it's in Urumbe, an area where frost pockets are, are less than in other um, uh, agroecological regions, as long as they're in a frost-free area, they can establish this SC608 yellow medium maturity hybrid uh, aiming to get it for green millies because it has a good roast, it has very good roasting qualities as well as a long attractive cost. Then we have, uh, we managed to respond to that question on SC spike. as we have no more questions to respond to, please feel free to continue to interact with us on our various platforms. As CITCO, we have taken full precedence in uh, employing good 
digital um, uh, digital marketing efforts by making sure that we are digital savvy and making sure that we are on digital platforms, different digital platforms to interact with farmers, especially in light of the COVID pandemic. So you are able to interact with us on our Twitter page, our Facebook page. You can even go through our website, www.citygroup.com, where you can see a detailed explanation of the different varieties. Did you know that Citgo has a WhatsApp? Uh, Citgo has a, a Citgo has um, a page where you can go through and make sure that you can get information. We have an application software that you can go on to and get detailed explanation of different cropping ventures that you want to go into. It, can, it also has yield calculators, moisture meters that you can also use to get further explanation. We have a question here from Anonymous. Anonymous is asking about issues to do with post harvest. He has, uh, he has specifically requested us to explain briefly about post harvest handling. So looking at post harvest handling, you find that it's important for a farmer to take note of the fact that having done everything, all factors are out constant and you have reached the maturity stage. The next step is to safeguard your yield and not in care lost in the last minute. So you need to make sure that you understand issues to do with the moisture, the recommended moisture levels for you to store your grain. So the recommended moisture levels for you to store your grain are 12.5% using the GMB standards for Zimbabwe. So you, this is the grain market board standards for Zimbabwe. So for you to get to 12.5%, a lot will have happened. Your crop will reach physiological maturity when the moisture content, particularly looking at maize, is at around 30%, which is to say the moisture level is still quite high. So you need to allow for your crop to dry down during the dry down window, which differs depending on variety as well as the climatic conditions. So it will dry down to around 15 to about 20%. Some farmers will take their crop out of the field when the moisture is between 15 to 20% to safeguard against theft because there are those who want to harvest what they've got planted. So they will harvest their crop and make sure that they sit in an area where drying can be further accelerated. For mechanized farmers with dryers, the dryer will then dry it up to the desired moisture content. For farmers without the dryer, they can come in with um, uh, more, more resource uh, allowing methods where they can put their grain on a crop or it, where it can dry off, or they can place their grain on a, on a hard surface, or they can put something on the ground so that their grain can dry off. It is recommended for you to dry your grain to the recommended moisture content of 4.5%. Suffice to say, over drying of grain will also reduce the quality and promote weevil infestation. So you need to make sure that you get the desired optimum uh, moisture level. We are going to be having more webinars to interact with you discussing post harvest handling of grain. As we also prepare, we're going to be having a webinar on wheat production. So just to wrap up our presentation, we have a question here from Trevor. You said we can plant for green millies. How does it mean it can fully mature? Uh, you, you said we can plant for green millies now. Yes, you can plant for green millies now, depending on your area, your ability to irrigate, as well as the incidence of frost in your area. So this will guide you in terms of variety selection. We have another question here from Elizabeth Dungeni. What is the best yield I can expect from AC spike? But we have already explained this one, where we said it's above 4.5 tons per hectare. So in conclusion, Citco is a product for every farmer, meaning to say we have a wide crop basket from your maize, your soya bean, your maize, your soya bean, your wheat. We also have small grain or traditional grain crops. We also have in the basket, horticulture crops. Outside of that, we have individual varieties that are suited for a different cropping program. Having said that, would like to thank you all for joining us during this virtual field day. And if you would like to view this field day and uh, take a few notes, it's going to be um, loaded on our YouTube page. And we're also going to provide a clip that is going to summarize what we have just been presenting on. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to having you in our next virtual field day on Friday. As we have just explained, Citgo is a variety for every farmer. So this was a commercial virtual field day. On Friday, we'll be having a communal virtual field day just to show you the extent and the inclusivity of Citgo variety across farming sectors. Thank you for joining us. 
for joining us and have a wonderful day.